Hey guys, welcome to Blend. We're glad to have you tonight. You can find yourself in one of six homes around the area. Tonight, just dig in for fellowship, food, and fun, and we're gonna have a great time. So happy you could make it. Tonight's topic is about one of the most neglected activities in a Christian's life. Prayer, all right, uh, true. And uh, there's a whole lot we can say about prayer, but for the sake of time, we're just gonna touch on some basic things. I'm gonna ask you a few questions and I gave three questions to your leader, and they're gonna ask you these questions afterwards. So Sean and I are gonna hit these questions and your leader's gonna talk about. So uh, number one. So what does prayer look like in your life? Well, for me, uh, we all have situations in life, whether, whether we're dealing with sickness, whether we're uh, dealing with a uh, new, new baby, new birth, uh, promotion, mm -hmm. we may get fired. But there are situations that we find ourselves in every day. And I think prayer, it doesn't always change the situation, but it always changes the way we view that certain situation and our outlook on, on those situations. What about you? Uh, I think another thing when you're dealing with prayer, um, it deals with how you present your prayer to the Lord. And I think this was important in the Jewish uh, culture. And Jesus spoke to this uh, regarding the Pharisees. He said, you don't really want to stand among the crowds and just let them know your prayers. And you don't want to just compete, uh, continue to say things with uh, just rambling and stuttering. And I think that we should be more direct in our prayers. And we don't have to just give an hour-long prayer. But if you just let God know your desires and your needs, and he's, He turns His ear to you, and He's affectionate towards you, and you have confidence in the Lord, you go to Him directly and say, God, I need this. God, you are holy, you are worthy, and just give it blunt, straight to the point. I think Jesus requests that, and they desire that. Mm -hmm. Colossians 4, 2. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Mm -hmm. Big part of uh, what I see a lot in my life, or what I try to see in my life. You know, Philippians talks about doing everything without mm -hmm. uh, complaining or grumbling, uh, but in everything, uh, give thanks, and, and Paul talks about this. So. Just giving God thanks. We often bring Him requests and uh, mm -hmm. confessions, but we often fail to, to kind of go back and say, thank you, God. You watched over me in this situation, or you watched over my child in this situation, or you, you healed my body. Uh, so mm -hmm. giving thanks, that's a, that's a huge part of, of prayer and what it looks like in our, in our lives. And I believe uh, an, an evident of a prayer for life reminds me of this quote that says, uh, if, you f if you don't find yourself falling on your face in prayer often, then you shouldn't be surprised if you often find yourself falling on your face in sin. And I think that's so true. A lot of times we forget uh, this direct connection we have with our Creator and our Lord and Savior to just go to Him. He wants to know your heart. He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear you praise His name and give Him thanks. And Oftentimes we drift away in selfishness and we, we trust our flesh way too much. You know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. And this is a situation we find ourselves in all the time. And I don't think we should be surprised at all if we're not spending time communicating to our divine father and rather relying on ourselves to handle a certain situation and then we end up falling flat on our face in whatever sin that we find ourselves in. Number two, when is it most difficult for you to pray? Oh man, I think there are times in, in everybody's walk where we have difficult seasons, but I know for me, one of the most difficult times, period, to pray is when I find myself outside of God's will for my life, or I find myself straying away from my walk. And in those times, I, I feel selfish. I feel like I can do it. Uh, my flesh is strong enough. My desires are mine. They're not the Lord's, and, and I'm seeking fulfillment of myself. And, but when I do find myself getting back on track, it's through prayer, but it's so difficult because my prayers are self-centered. And I'm praying, God, what can you do to me? Can you help me, give me strength, give me wisdom and clarity? But oftentimes, and every day I say, Sean, are you praying uh, for others more than you're praying for yourself? And if not, I think that really places a burden on my soul. And so I really make an effort now in that self-centeredness to wash that away and go selfless. And I think the beauty of prayer is that Jesus wants us to place all our burdens upon Him and just really give Him everything that we have and be dependent upon Christ. And prayer teaches you dependency while walking in our selfishness teaches us independency. But the beauty 
is that Christ is enough and we are so insufficient in, in just who we are, but Jesus is so sufficient to every need that we may have. Yep. A wise man once said, when you're at the bottom, prayer is at the top, and when you're at the top, prayer is usually at the bottom. And I think we can relate to that in our lives. Uh, you know, when things are going well, you know, kids are doing well, parents are doing well, family, you got a good job, your, your marriage is great. You find prayer is often neglected, kind of put aside, but when you're at the bottom and, and your loved ones are sick, uh, you just got fired from your job, uh, maybe your kids aren't doing great, uh, they're causing you to lo lose hair, you know, and for your hair to turn gray. Uh, you, you run to God and we pray, God, help me, I'm in a mess. Mm. So I think it's most difficult for us when we're, when we're at the bottom, but I think we look at the life of Jesus and, you know, His bottom, it, you can call it, you know, the Garden of Gethsemane, and He's praying and He, he knew what was about to happen, and He, he prays, He God, if this is your will, you know, so be it. But mm -hmm. uh, and, and look on his cross, his last words were prayer. Third question, how much should we pray? Okay, so raise your hand if you, if you think you pray enough, right? All hands up everywhere probably, probably not, right? Okay, so no one uh, prays enough, right? And uh, I think we can all stand to use a little bit more prayer for ourselves mm -hmm. and for others. Uh, Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, he says, pray without ceasing. What does that look like? I think Smith Wigglesworth gives us a great uh, example of this throughout his life. And he said this once, he said, I, I rarely go, I, I rarely pray for more than 10 minutes at a time, but I rarely go 10 minutes without praying. So how much should we pray? Uh, every 10 minutes, you know? <laughs> and what does that look like? Little prayers. Does that mean you have to, you know, lay prostrate on the floor every 10 minutes and just cry, cry your little eyes out to God? I don't think so. But dropping prayers in here, God, thank you, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, what about you, man? Well, I think if, if Paul and Smith Wigglesworth aren't enough to convince you, I believe that Jesus sums it up in a parable in Luke chapter 18. He says, at all times, you should not lose heart and you should pray. And uh, can we really go 24 hours praying? Can we really spend our time completely meditating on, on prayer? And I think it is difficult, but I think what you really should take from this is Jesus said not lose heart. So don't find prayer as a burden. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not something we should, oh man, I didn't pray in it, but to rejoice in the fact that you can communicate with Jesus every single day, our mediator, and just mm -hmm. really take advantage of that and just talk to him and share with him and hey, any kind of relationship that you have here on earth, it's all about communication. You should expect the exact same with our Lord and Savior. So to, to recap everything, because we want you guys to talk about this tonight. Number one, what does prayer look like in your life? We want you to be open with one another and just be real with it. Number two, when is it most difficult for you to pray? And then the last question obviously would be how often should we pray? And so please take time to discuss it in your small groups. Be open with each other and please just know that nobody's going to judge you. And this is a great time for us to grow as the body. So please take time, enjoy the time together, fellowship, have fun, and don't forget to pray. See you later.